I got a question the other day about a steroid that is not as popular as it should be. Or is that for the right reasons? The one I'm talking about is Terinabol, or also known as T-Ball. Now, from my personal experiences, again, guys, if you follow this channel, you know this is all about what I know about the drugs. I don't care what it says in the textbook. They're often wrong. Who did the research for that? And those were written way back, and they have not been updated. So the best source of information for gear is YouTube. So here I am to provide you with my advice. T-ball. Now, let's just get one thing out of the way, first and foremost. It is very similar to D-Ball, but without the side effects. That's it, very simple. And when I mean the side effects, you do still get the liver toxicity, 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 whatever it is, you know what I'm trying to, trying to say. It's very liver toxic. You still get those side effects, but all the bloat and everything else that comes with it is very minimal. So the gyno is not an issue. High estrogen is not an issue. If anything, it combats against high estrogen. So it's a very great steroid to take for athletic performance. And that brings me down to our recent heavyweight world UFC champion, probably in boxing as well, but UFC I'm talking about, Johnny Bones Jones, very famous for it. Tarina Ball, did he take it? Didn't he take it? Who knows? Yeah, of course he took it. Him and alongside every single other person. There's a lot of athletes that have taken this stuff and got away with it because it's in and out your system quite rapid. I know they do you side of testing. This isn't a video about that. This is just about trainable. So my personal experience with trainable, it was one of those things where, you know, when you're younger, uh, especially when you first come into the scene of steroids, you're always trying to find the best stack, the, the, you know, the stack that's gonna add mass and add the stack that's gonna uh, cut the most fat off you. And everybody has this thing that where is that holy grail? Is it trend and test? Is it T-ball and EQ? Is it Decker and you know, everyone's trying to figure out which is the best stack to take. And the, the, the reality of that thing is, or to answer that question, should I say, everybody's different. Now, there are certain things to look for. Like for me, personally, it's longevity. Which is the thing that I can take safest for the longest to give me the best benefit? That's what my goal is. By all means, there's so many other things out there that are gonna be more beneficial for athletic performance. Testosterone ananthate isn't the best for athletic performance. T-ball definitely is. You know, Sus and Decker isn't great to, to, to for longevity, but it's great to add a hell of a lot of size and muscle mass. So everything has its play. And obviously, like I've mentioned in other videos, you've got to follow who you believe is the best advice or the guy that you want to look like the most. So my experience with T-Ball was very simple. I'd taken D-Ball and I liked D-Ball actually. It was pretty good. Only took it for four weeks. Crazy amount of strength gains. Stupid amounts of strength gains, but the bloat was unbearable. And the main thing for me, and this has always been an issue for me with any gear, and that is digestion. And what I mean by that is not so much digestion, but appetite. Uh, any orals that you take, other than Anavar and Winstrol for me, suppress my appetite. So Oxys, D-Ball, T-Ball, they all suppress my appetite. I know this now. But at the time, I thought if I take T-Ball, I'll get away with it because of the, you know, the, the way the compound is a little bit different. Took T-Ball. And yes, it is true. It is exactly the same as D-Ball. So you do get the strength benefits. You do get the athletic performance benefits. Everything twitches a little bit faster. Everything moves a little bit quicker. You're a little bit more alert, a little bit more switched on. I did take it for six weeks. Uh, 50 mgs. Was that a legit dose? Who knows? Would I have liked to have taken it 20 30, yes. Was it available at the time? No, only 50 mgs was available. So that's what I took. And it wasn't, I don't really believe in like cutting the tablets in half and stuff because I don't know. A lot of it's just, you know, I'm, I'm guessing. Someone correct me if I'm, you know, if I'm wrong here, but a lot of it's just bulking agent. So there might be, it's not all, you know what I mean? It's not all what it's made out to be because they have to use some sort of agent to bulk it together. You can't just get Turinabol and say, well, this is Turinabol or this is Winstrol. There's so many other agents that, that mix together to make it into a tablet form, then it's pressed and, and all that. So you don't really know which part, if, you, if it was a big tablet, if you were to split it, which side is, is it a 50-50? Is it all fit? I don't know. So I always think of stuff and I think, well, this isn't all of it. It's gonna be in either here or here. So I'll just take both. So don't split your tablets, guys. That's what I'm trying to say here. Don't cut your tablets in half. It doesn't work, it's a myth. That's what I believe anyway. I'm sure someone's gonna back me on it. 
So Turinabol, 50 milligrams, that's what I took. Got a great, great um, response from it. My strength stayed exactly the same, but then came the issue of the hunger for me. And I knew it's suppressing my appetite. And when I look at a steroid and I think this is suppressing my appetite, I think, what is it doing to my insides? What is it doing to my liver, my kidneys and all this kind of stuff? I didn't at the time do research on Turinabol like I do now at the minute. Like if I wanted to do research on like, let's say, Anavol, I'll do blood tests and I'll take it for, for a couple of weeks and I'll do another blood test. Back in those days, it was like, look, this is what I'm on. I'm going to do blood test every six months. So in a six months period, it's hard to see if Turinabol actually caused any liver damage. My livers were a little bit slight, well, I say slightly, quite highly damaged at the time. So and obviously I was running other compounds with it. Who's to blame? What's to blame? We don't know, but I can go off feel and I can 100% tell you that it definitely suppressed my appetite. All orals do that other than low dose Anavon Rinstra, like I've mentioned. So for me, it's a great drug. I wouldn't take it long term. If you're a competitive bodybuilder, if you're a powerlifter, and you want to take it short, short term, two to three weeks, high dose, bang it ready for a contest prep. By all means, it's a good drug to take. Athletic performance, if you're a sprinter, if you're a boxer, if you're MMA, if you're doing anything like that, Turinabol is the thing to go to. I'm not condoning, I'm not saying go and compete taking those stuff. In fact, I will tell you something very interesting. Years ago in Pride, and there was a contract, you can find this online, there was a contract, you know when they released the contracts to, to the, um, the athletes? In the contract, in bold, highlighted, capitals, it said, we do not test for performance enhancers. In other words, what it should have said is, take gear. That's what it should have said. And the reason for that is, and I do believe this as well, the fights are more exciting, they last a bit longer, the, the KO rate is a little bit less. I mean, if you look at the old school UFC guys or Pride and everything, the guys were so jacked up on everything. They weren't getting knocked out as much. I know it's more dangerous. Obviously, it's easier to get your lights switched off and then you're done. You take more, more, more damage, like boxing, for example, because the gloves are so thick, they take a little bit of damage, but over a longer time, which causes more brain damage. Whereas in UFC, boom, lights out, you're done. That's easier. I know it looks more brutal, but that's why there's less deaths in the UFC and MMA than there is overall in boxing because boxing, you're getting battered little by little, little by little, little by little, and you're not really feeling it. Whereas, you know, it's better to just take a big blow. But if you watch the older UFC days, you guys will understand what I'm trying to say. They weren't getting knocked out that quick. It was taking a few shots for them to get knocked out. Nowadays, it's catch the chin and they're out. So I do believe in sports, they should be allowed. I believe that not just for performance, just for recovery, to, to, to just play at that high level, to make sure you don't, get, you don't get injured, to make sure everything, you know, if you're gonna go for those big contracts, those big multi-million pound contracts, multi-million dollar contracts, then you need to be in tip top shape. If I was in, the, in a ring or in an octagon, I'd want to know before going in there, I'm doing everything, at least everything that that other guy has been doing. And how do you know what that other guy's been doing? He's been doing every single thing. Trust me on this. And there's a reason for it. That's why they test in sports. Because if people weren't doing it, they wouldn't be testing. And how accurate are these tests anyway? But who knows? This isn't a video about testing or drug testing. This is a video about Turinabol. It is a great steroid. Use it wisely. Four weeks at a time. No more than four weeks. You are going to get crazy strength benefits. Crazy athletic benefits from this as well. With very minimal side effects. Hope this video gave you guys some value. Comment down below and like the video.